Welcome to Chicago's World Fair, where you will see and learn about all the different cultures and see the progress that the U.S. has gone through up until now. The Chicago's World Fair, also known as the World's Columbian Expedition, they had the fair to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus coming to the New World in 1492. They showed multiple exhibits of different cultures. At Chicago's World's Fair, there are multiple events to participate in and watch and enjoy. Have you ever heard of, of Street in Cairo? I sure have it. Well, here let me tell you about it. Cairo prohibits along with such, such features and the Cairo streets seen as camels and donkeys. They would uh, prohibit the social events of characterizing Cairo, Cairo life, such as weddings uh, among or Cairo streets either. It is easy to hire Cairo types. But Percy, what are you doing? I'm building dancing. Oh, that's cool. Well, I'm going to Belly dancing was a big part of Chicago's World's Fair and many different practice and perform during this time. There are many different types for belly dancing such as oriental dance, the hoochie coochie, coochie coochie, and the muscle dance. Belly dancing outfits are loose in different colors. They were loose long skirts and a short tight top. They're, they can show off their midriffs. Many dancers were named Little Egypt after one of the belly dancers attractions. So what did the African Americans even do in the World's Fair? The African Americans wanted to use the Chicago World Fair as a way to show the white Americans how much they've contributed since they emancipated. The Chicago's World Fair was mainly run by white Americans, while there were still many races and cultures there. African Americans could not be a part of the Colombian Guard. When they tried, they were brought upon obstacles and could not receive the job. There were 2,000 openings for the job and not one African American received the job. So did the African Americans get the exhibit in the World Fair? There were more than 65,000 exhibits at the Chicago's World Fair and they did not give one to a single African American. However, you know the company Aunt Jemima? The pancakes? Yes. They did not let African Americans have their own exhibit, but Nancy Green, a former slave, got to advertise the company Aunt Jemima and Nancy was at a booth where she cooked and served pancakes for hundreds of guests every day. And they loved her bright smile. The way they accepted blacks in the World Fair was if they were in the kitchen. There was also a day called Negro Day. The African Americans could be part of the fair. The African Americans did not see it much as a nice gesture, but they still used it to their advantage. I mean, how would you feel if you were only given one day out of five months the fair lasted? Not to mention, they couldn't be one of the 65,000 exhibits. I would be very mad. I feel treated unfair and discriminated against. That's how they felt when they used Negro Day to express this to the public. Ida B. Wells and Frederick Douglass were the main advocates fighting for their rights and for everyone to see the problems African Americans go through every day in the U.S. They not only used Negro Day as a way to express this, but Ida B. Wells and Douglass wrote a pamphlet called The Reason Why the Colored American is Not in the World Columbian Expedition. They handed about 10,000 of these in the last three months of the World's Fair. Overall, the Chicago's World's Fair is a great place to go. After looking at all the cultures and the exhibits, I would definitely go there in the future.